In the opening essays of Starting Point, Miyazaki stresses that animators need something to say, that their work will fall flat without some inner world they must express. I want to apply these ideas to my favorite Ghibli film, Spirited Away. I love this movie for its thematic complexity, as the protagonist Chihiro navigates a bathhouse for spirits after her parents are cursed. The film ponders many ideas, like work, identity, environmentalism, and importantly, the nature of greed and generosity. These themes of greed have always felt like the most foundational theme of the story to me. We can connect greed to the curse afflicting Chihiro's parents, to the motives of Yubaba, the antagonist, and to one of the most well-known figures from the movie, No-Face. Throughout all of this, Chihiro stands as a beacon of generosity, shining against the backdrop the other characters create. In this essay, I want to consider these ideas of theme and generosity, examining how the characters interact with each other and the rules they follow to understand what Miyazaki wanted to say, what his inner world represents as greed and generosity. Significant themes in stories have a positive and negative value. In the case of Spirited Away, that would be the negative value of greed contrasting with the positive value of generosity, but you can find these pairs throughout fiction. Life and death, wealth and poverty, freedom and bondage, these values attract each other. This idea is summed up by an excellent quote from Ursula K. Le Guin's Earthsea novels. To light a candle is to cast a shadow. The positive and negative values are inseparable. Properly depicting themes in a story, especially foundational ones, requires showing both values with equal vigor. Understanding the generosity of Chihiro, Haku, and others requires Yubaba's and No Face's greed for context. Failing to show both sides of the theme creates flat, thematically muddled stories. Nothing happens. Characters go about their lives in meaningless conflict. Instead of saying something, you say nothing, creating a story from spectacle rather than substance. Thankfully, Spirited Away says plenty. Greed permeates the film. The inciting incident, Chihiro's parents turning into pigs, is inspired by greed, as are the motivations of her adversaries in Yubaba and No Face. Ibaba and No-Face are of particular interest because they both embody greed in different forms. No-Face in a very primordial form, and Yubaba in the impact greed can have on people. Yubaba embodies a capitalistic greed. She's a wealthy woman profiting from the exploitation of her bathhouse employees. As we're told, working for Yubaba is the only way to survive in this world. But the arrangement gives Yubaba all the power. Her contract strips workers of part of their name to control them, and they exist at her whim. The setting plays a huge role in establishing the class difference between Yubaba and her workers, as well as the lack of care she has for them. While her workers sleep in a cramped room without space or privacy, her opulent rooms dominate an entire floor. This disdain extends past the setting to Yubaba's attitudes. Consider the burst of affection she shows Chihiro after the young girl cleanses the river spirit the first and last time Yubaba treats her as anything but an annoyance. <laughs> Yubaba doesn't praise her hard work or any quality of Chihiro's, she's just excited they made a profit. In Yubaba's mind, a person's worth correlates with the value they offer her. <laughs> Yubaba represents how greed blinds the afflicted to the humanity of those around them in favor of profit. It's an uncomfortably modern sentiment, where Yubaba represents the impact greed has on interpersonal relationships, how it encourages one to extort and manipulate others. No Face represents greed on a far more primordial level. By examining it and the rules governing it, we can uncover the clearest picture of what Miyazaki wants to say about greed. The magic in Spirited Away follows rules, though we're rarely told what they are. I've spent a lot of time considering the rules binding No-Face, a predatory spirit attracted by greed. 
After Chihiro lets it in, No Face repeatedly offers her what it believes she wants. Bath tanks to fill tubs. Uh, Later, when it eats Agaru in exchange for the gold, we understand how No Face functions. It offers people what they want. When they become greedy, it eats them or their offerings, growing all the while. But wait, you might say, Chihiro took two bath tags from No Face, but it never ate her. The key difference between Chihiro taking the tags and the bathhouse workers taking the gold lies in intent. Chihiro took what she needed, while the others took more and more and more, their hunger for gold rivaling No Face's avarice. Taking what you need isn't greedy. Taking more than you need, that which isn't yours, or things that harm others when taken, is. Chihiro's parents exemplify two forms of greed by feasting at the empty stall. Firstly, they didn't need the food. And of course, it wasn't theirs. This example demonstrates taking that which isn't yours and that which you don't need. For an example in the movie of greed manifesting as taking something that harms others when taken, we need look no further than Yubaba's contracts robbing workers of their names and autonomy. This concise definition of greed will help us define generosity in similar terms in the next section. Greed and generosity in spirited way rely on interpersonal relationships. The greedy acts we see, Yubaba taking names, No Face buying food and labor with pebbles, are all emblematic of two parties, one of whom is taking what they want to the other's detriment without giving equal value in return. When we come to look at generosity, we'll find it also takes two parties, except instead of one taking and the other losing, we'll find one party giving and the other receiving. The first act of generosity we see in the movie isn't actually performed by Chihiro, but Haku. To get to the heart of generosity, though, we need to look towards the story's end, when Chihiro steps up and embodies generosity as wholly as Yubaba and No Face do greed. After an injured Haku returns from Zeniba's, Chihiro goes to great lengths to help him, most notably giving him some of the medicine she was saving for her parents. She continues this act by giving the rest of the medicine to No Face, then embarking on the journey that gave us one of anime's most iconic scenes. Generous people give without regard for gain or loss. They simply see somebody who needs help and give it, even if they have less in the end. Generosity doesn't require giving away physical possessions. It can be an act. Haku sheltering Chihiro falls into this category. Haku risks his role in the bathhouse and his apprenticeship, if not his life. But Chihiro needs help, so he gives it. This plays into a, a tangential theme of karmic justice. Chihiro begins the story selfish and spoiled. Haku's generosity inspires Chihiro to help him in the end. This generosity extends to No Face, who Chihiro recognizes as sick and leads him from the bathhouse, which coincidentally saves the Eden employees, as well as leading No Face to fulfillment when he stays at Zeniba's. <laughs> This dynamic also changes the bathhouse. While they generally disliked Chihiro in the beginning, after her selfless act saving several Eden employees, they're all on her side when she returns from Swamp Bottom. <laughs> this generosity combats all the forms of greed previously established. Yubaba values her workers as profit. Chihiro and Haku contrast this by eating others because they're people. 
Chikoro seems untouchable by greed. No faces excess, never tempts her, and we never see her take more than she needs. Haku and Chihiro don't monopolize generosity. Kamaji shows plenty of generosity, lying on Chihiro's behalf in the beginning and giving her train tickets to help Haku. Lin, though cautious at first, becomes a staunch supporter of Chihiro, giving her tips, sharing steamed buns, and helping her escape the bathhouse. These smaller moments of generosity and kindness highlight one last thematic element I want to explore. Being generous doesn't mean moving mountains. Yes, Chihiro undergoes great risk and makes many sacrifices in the end. Haku risks plenty sheltering her in the beginning of the movie, but not every generous act needs to be so drastic, and we can see this in the very beginning of the story. Chihiro begins the story as a very reactive protagonist. We find her in the back of the car as her parents force her to move houses. Her parents drag her into the amusement park. It's their greed that angers the spirits and forces Chihiro in this world to begin with. When Haku finds her, she's not really given much choice. He spirits her away in this big long chase scene, gives her a route, gives her a task, and she is just reacting to what everybody around her is doing. Until she goes to meet Kamaji. When she does, she sees a little suit sprite struggling with its burden. <laughs> Chihiro comes to its aid, taking its burden and helping the small, strange creature. Chihiro has no reason to help the sprite. She needs Kamaji to give her work. This is just a distraction. Time that could be spent furthering her goals, energy that could go to self-preservation, work, and profit, go instead to this act of insignificant kindness. Though insignificant, this moment falls within our definition of generosity. The suit sprite needed help, and Chihiro helped. That her first active choice in the movie was a generous one tells us much about who she is beneath the spoiled exterior. It plays into that idea of karmic justice. Chihiro wins the affection of the suit sprites who guard her worldly possessions, and it's why Kamaji vouches for her. But above all else, when I reflect on this moment after seeing the movie so many times, and in the context of this video that has explored it further than I have before, what this first act really stands out to me as is an important reminder of what generosity really is, and how simple it can be. Being a generous spirit doesn't mean you give away all of your worldly possessions, it doesn't mean you become a monk or a pilgrim or anything like that. It's simple. It's just helping. 